Toby, we've got 25 minutes left on this camera to say what I need to say. Hi, my name is Enrico Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. <laughs> no, my name is Justin Foy. I'm an old-timey comedian. Only old-timey in the sense that I'm not like, you know, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, but like I was when I was a long time ago. And the Lord saved me, and I've been born again for since, well, since uh, 25 years. Walking, preaching, talking. Mostly just out on the street and wherever I'm at. And then the Holy Spirit uses me. If you're new to this channel, I take a I take a walk with my little dog, and I talk about the love of Jesus, and we talk about the rapture, and we talk about prophecy and where we're at, and also just that I'm a Jesus plus nothing kind of guy. Once saved, always saved. And today that's on my heart. Here's how I'm going to start. First of all, Lord, filter out anything I say that is not from you. Everyone should weigh what I say with, a, with grains of salt and the Bible and, and your Holy Spirit. Just like the doves and other animal sacrifices, they would be cleaned off of feathers and offered as pure sacrifices to you. Our lifting up of our words and praise and teachings are covered with our frailties, but you're the final sacrifice and it comes up to you fulfilled. There's Sean, he's walking up here. Dude, I got to get this one out. I got to get... Can I meet you on the circle back? Yeah. Are you going to the store? Yeah. I'll, I'll meet you on the circle back. Okay. So, uh, here it is. Thank you, Jesus. Here's how I'm going to ask you. Do you think Joel Osteen is saved? Do you think he's saved? Do you think Jesse Duplantis is saved? Do you think Kenneth Copeland is saved? Do you think... Oh my God, Tammy, or, you know, Faye Baker, uh, Jimmy and Tammy Faye Baker. Do you think they're saved? Do you think that these massive prosperity gospel folks with three private jets, Lamborghini, mega church pastors, do you think they're saved? I do. Do I agree with what they say all the time? No. Do I think they're saved? Yes. How are you saved? That's what you got to ask yourself. If you think you're saved by your own works or your own good deeds or your own way you live your life, that's not the gospel. These people also preach the correct gospel. They do say, Romans 15, 1 through 4, they do preach it. In a salvation message, believe on Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, believe that he died, buried, rose again. And while we were yet sinners, he died for us and we are saved. We are saved by grace, not by works, lest any man should boast in heaven. You're going to boast in heaven. Now, listen, they give that, they believe that. But then they go off and they'll say all kinds of things that are wrong. Okay? All kinds of things like, the not necessarily for me, the prosperity stuff. For me, what I don't like is the if-then clauses that they use after they give you a free grace gospel. Then they, it's called backloading works and there's if-then gospel of if you do this and if you do that then god will reward and then if then seed harvest like i'm the if then of your works to receive from god that's false the only if then is to believe that's the only if then and then jesus who is the author and perfecter of your salvation he finishes the work. And the best thing you can do is lean on him. These, 
the, the prosperity types will add all kinds of works and for you to get blessed. Even to the point of, if you give, you'll be given more. Press down. There are, and some of it can be biblically backed up. So my hang up with them is not the prosperity part. Who cares? I'm going to tell you right now. Was Simon Magnus, Simon the Sorcerer, was Simon saved? That's how we have to go back. The dude who tried to buy the Holy Spirit from Peter and James, seeing that they laid hands on people who believed and they received the Holy Spirit. Was Simon saved? The answer is yes. Believe it or not, go read the book of Acts chapter 8 when Philip the evangelist went into Samaria it says it prefaces that story with Simon the sorcerer teaching wizardry and paganry and uh, calling himself like the divine power and like tricking people and he was a pagan sorcerer then Philip the evangelist comes in and he preaches Jesus Christ and it says they all believed including Simon. It says then a specific verse, Simon believed, even Simon believed, and was baptized. When Philip the evangelist came, a guy like me, when I go in and I meet, and I meet, the Lord leads me to a sorcerers. It's happened several times in my life. Now, this sorcerer wants to buy magic and do magic. And his old way, his old body, just like you and I in the old ways we have, we still... Uh, that's why you got to pray. It's filtered. It's the true only sacrifice is Jesus. You try to offer yourself, you're going to be full of your old, nasty, sinful ways. So, Peter, James, come. They, Simon watches them give the Holy Spirit, and he asks Peter, can I buy this power to lay hands and give people the Holy Spirit? And Peter rebukes him, straight up. Ask God for forgiveness of this. I can see that you're, 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 you have, you're controlled by deceit, and this is your sinful nature. How you doing? Come on, come on, come on. No, no, no. And it rebukes him, but it doesn't say you're out, you're going to hell. It says go repent from that. That's the type of rebuke you would get from a father. And then you people will say, what about Ananias and Sapphira? They tried to lie about money and God killed them. People say, see, false believers, wolves in sheep clothing, not saved. No. They are an example of the doctrine I call Thros Palaton or Panaton, where it is that God can kill a believer to save him from a great sin, the sin that leads to death. And in order to protect them, or as a judgment of their, the misery of their life, to believe in vain, those type of scriptures talk about your human life. If you get caught up so badly in false doctrine, so badly in greed, the Lord may take your life here on earth. Okay? But you're saved. God doesn't do that with non-believers. Alright? It's a deep one this morning. I was studying like so hard, so crazy, trying to figure this out. And there's so many layers and so many arguments. But just ask yourself, do you think these people are saved? Then ask yourself, how are you weighing it? How are you answering that question? Well, you're saying because they teach bad doctrine and they're hypocrites and they're greedy and they're... Yeah, but is that how they're saved? No. They're saved by the belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to go to Sean. Hey, 
Poppy. I had to get that little bit out for <laughs> How you doing, brother? What up? Good morning. Good morning to you. Oh, God, it's hot, dude. I know. It's going to be in the hundreds food, easy for a month. Easy, huh? How are I you, brother? I've had better days. Okay, well, don't worry about it. It's a I've Sunday. Just better. rest. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I was thinking. But, uh, <laughs> okay, good. So just I rest then, bud. All right, God bless you. I got you, a brother. huge, deep message trying to get out, and it's... I'm going I'm to listen to it. Okay, uh, it should be up in about an hour. Okay. See you, bud. Okay. Is Sean saved? You better believe it. Does he walk around sometimes and he's mad about his own sin or things didn't go right? Yeah, misery can happen. But that doesn't mean we're not saved. And we need to pray right now in Jesus' name for these people. In the name of Jesus, I pray for these people. I pray for Sean. I pray for myself. Save us from ourself. Give us happiness, joy, and abundance in this life from you as a free gift. Free gift. Praise you, Lord. There's a lot more you can study and say about it, okay? And I want to. My ultimate point is why, why am I talking about this? Because now we're going to do the second half of the talk, the rapture walk talk. We've got a lot of Christians right now claiming that half of the body of Christ right now basically is a wolf in sheep's clothing that support Donald Trump or the guy who saw the assassination, the prophet. Okay, we're not old timey prophets. First, you got to clear up. We're not old timey prophets. New Testament prophets is just a spiritual gift that has a measure of deposit by the Holy Spirit. It cannot be purchased like Simon thought. It cannot be manufactured like and lied about like Ananias and Sapphira thought. The Holy Spirit is a deposit and it's a measure given by God. And we see through a glass dimly. We are not perfect word of God like an old time prophet where it was the absolute perfect word of God written as scripture, okay? This deposit that has been given to Christians. Go watch the is it what's that? What is the guy? Biggs? I Billy. I, what's the dude's name who saw the Trump assassination? I've seen all kinds of rapture watcher people saying, "No, he's a false prophet." Go watch the this one, Steve Shikoletti and Alex Jones interview, where Alex Jones was like, "Dude, I've been waiting to get you on here. What's up? How did you see that? Tell me. You tell me about it." And both of Steve and Billy Biggs, gosh, what's Dustin, Brandon, Brandon Biggs, they both repeatedly say the name of Jesus. It has to be done in the name of Jesus. And even Pastor Steve Ciccolati, who I don't agree with all what these guys say, but even he said, listen, part of this to really confirm it, Trump has to say the name of Jesus. It's not good enough to just say Thank you, God, and, uh, you know, if you do good, you go to heaven, and if you do bad, you go to hell. No, that's not the gospel. That's not the part of the prophecy that says Trump was massively born again. The Kim Clement stuff, Trey Smith, other people, the My Pillow guy, other people who are born again Christians, they will all tell you to truly fulfill it. He has to say the name of Jesus. That's how you're saved. Not by any of the other stuff. So here we go. There's wolves in sheep's clothing. Those wolves that you've been talking about were just on an interview who said Trump has to say the name of Jesus for that part of it to be true. He has to say it. It's not good enough. I agree. So until then, until the rapture, I pray in the name of Jesus, Donald Trump would say the name of Jesus. He would say it and be born again. I pray and ask for it. Father, just like when we lifted up Russell Brand and he was saved, says the name of Jesus, believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and the inheritance of the eternal life. But guess what? He became a Catholic. I mean, if I was to talk to that guy, I'd be so happy that he's born again, but I'd be like, dude, 
what are you doing? You're, you're taking your inheritance and now you're going backwards into some religious system that is totally wrong. It's the Galatian error. Are the Galatians saved? They were like Catholics where they would then go back to law keeping in order to maintain your salvation. Paul outright rebuked it. Outright rebuked Peter. Who, who's, who do they say is the foundation of the Catholic Church? Peter. He's the one who backed down from the free gift of Jesus Christ to the regular day people and saw it as got to be in the circumcision. Rebuked. Is he saved? Yes. So I, I, I'm building that up because we cannot start eating each other. The only time you're going to eat one another or a wolf in sheep clothing or the Antichrist spirit is if you deny the Son. You deny the Son who came in the flesh. You deny that. Then you are not saved, my friend. You are a spirit of Antichrist if you say that. If you say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe He lived a sinless life, died, was buried, rose again, and while I was yet a sinner, He saved me. Boom, saved. And Jesus says that I will not lose one. Not one. Not one. Jesus said that. He will not lose one. Once saved, always saved. And some people say, well, yeah, but those were ones that were never in there to begin with. Fine, whatever, I don't care. But if they said the name of Jesus and they believed in forever, sealed, signed, sealed by the Holy Spirit, praise you, Lord. you got to understand, too, though, there's another layer of message here about you'll see people believe in Jesus and then not yet receive a baptism of the Holy Spirit. They'll believe and then they'll go, ha Paul said to these people, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? And they go, we haven't heard of that. We were baptized by John or we were baptized by this guy, but we believe in Jesus. Okay, well, here's the Holy Spirit and it's a gift from God to receive your gifts as an engagement ring now. And anyone who believes can receive that. And who knows what awesome gift it's going to be from God. He's got a whole bunch of gifts to give you. There's a giant list of it in the New Testament. Prophecy, tongues, healing, miracles, teaching, encouragement, hospitality, preaching. I mean, there is a massive amount of healing, miracles. You can have that. That is a gift I received. Not only in my own body from God to receive a healing and a miracle, but also to be used by God to deliver it in the name of Jesus. Another reason why I'm bringing this up is because I have an amazing book, The Foy Town Miracles, and I'm giving it away free because I have a hard time understanding monetary systems in this world. How to receive a paycheck in order to just go and love and share the gospel. It's been a real burden and hardship for me. I've been kicked out of churches and small groups for nothing big, mostly for just being a unchurchable dude who's, you know, wants to go party sometimes. And I don't know, before I was married, when I would attempt to, I say this all the time, it's to my own shame, but I know it's not that bad. It's normal. But I would ask out girls all the time that were in the leadership and stuff. And they just didn't like that. Well, I was a young man who was, uh, let's just call it what it is, all right? Wanted to have a good time. And I'm sorry to those girls. That, I never did anything wrong. But for a church organization, they just couldn't have it. They couldn't have a young Justin Foy asking out all the girls, okay? I get it. And I'm talking about leaders, adults. So anyway, it's a shame to me because... It's embarrassing, and now that I'm an older man, I look back to that young man and went, dude, could you just have taken it easy? <laughs> you know, just take it easy, dude. Well, I didn't. I like to say nothing inappropriate, all right? Never accused of any inappropriate. But hey, do you want to go out? You want to get a few drinks? And these Christian types just, that rubbed them the wrong way. So I was kicked. I, organizational church was not my story. So I wrote stories, I made movies, and I preach on the street, and whoever I see and meet, with the love of God shining right through me, all right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that's all I can say. All of it is gonna just burn. 
Only the works of God working through you are going to last into eternal life. So I want people to read this book. It's probably the most amazing Holy Spirit filled book ever written. It's got 60 plus miracles in there. It's like, for some reason, my life, God used it in a way that had incredible modern day supernatural experiences. Thank you, Lord. And I want to give it away free. And yes, I do ask. And I put a GoFundMe page on my channel now that if you want to donate, if you want to give a love gift to me, I will receive it. I am in need of it in this time of my life. And I will receive it and use it to bless my family. I have a job and I'm going to Liberty University for a clinical master's degree in mental health counseling. And dude, it, it's tight. Every dollar I make goes out as a bill. And there are people, I, I also feel like it's an opportunity for somebody to use their gift of giving and out of abundance. I don't believe in a tithe to a church. I just, dude, it's, you have to give 10% in order to have this. No, that's the stuff we were just talking about. That's the, 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 the pharisaical way. If you are blessed by me, by the Holy Spirit working through me and the book, Foytown Miracles, then help me out. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can say. But most importantly, I get burdened by commenters or people who say, hey, you can't preach the gospel and ask for money. Well, I, I, I don't do it for money. I, I, I'm not a paid pastor. But I do ask for a love gift. I do. Uh, and it's humbling. But. <laughs> I remember I was at. Uh, because I'm feeling like. Dude, there's been a bunch of people who have given. Lately. And it's been the perfect timing. To help us out on bills and things we needed to pay for. And I was talking to my wife about it. And it's like. Man. It's, I'm, it's humbling. It's like you start to kind of go, oh my goodness. And then we prayed about it and it's like, man, as an exchange, if you give, read the Foytown Miracles, go on Amazon and write a review for me. Don't buy it from them. Have it for free. Write a review so that the algorithms can see that I have this amazing book. And when you read it, you will go, dude, yes, this is from the Holy Spirit. And it's meant to get out there. And it is an evangelistic tool for young men and women. But I kind of see me, you know, a lot of like all teenagers and like early born again Christians and people kind of on the fence asking questions. This book will blow your mind. Get it for your kid. And nowadays, it, the reason it's a free download, you can just download it from a click on my, click on my website, justinfoy.xyz. Just go there, boom, there's the link, download it. And you can give it to your son or daughter and they can read it on their tablet or their phone. Well, nobody's reading a book. Don't buy, you know what I mean? Who's reading paper books? That's not going to exist in 10 years. So they can read it on their phone. Share it with somebody that you think is real close or somebody. Read it for yourself first and then see if you can share it. Man, I'm so happy. It is the one thing, other than me doing these videos every morning, it is the one thing that I feel like I can offer that's of true value. Preach in the name of Jesus and the book about my life and all the miracles I've experienced. And then it'll open your eyes to also see that these some of these miracles are happening all around you all the time and you just don't see it. Sometimes you entertain angels and you don't even know it. Because they can appear and look just like the homeless man or the poor man on the street. I've had several miracles occur where I saw a homeless man, a poor man, a beggar, gave them money and then it was revealed unto me that it was an angel and a miracle occurred. 
Thank you, Lord. So many cool things. I just, it's, it's, it's like, and it's like 60 plus ch chapters that are like, you know, short kind of chapters. So you're not embedded in like super long, incredible narrative, uh, poetic narrative. No, man. It's like you're listening to Justin Foy tell you about his life. Cool pictures, everything. It's the one coolest thing I've ever done. Made cool, funny movies, done stand-up comedy, sitcoms, screenplays, corporate videos. Nothing is as cool as the Foytown Miracles. Not even close. Please read it and leave a comment if you have and tell me what you think. Every time someone reads this, it's immediately the best book I've ever read. Help me get it out there. Distributors, I don't know. I've, I've already submitted to Zondervan, Random House, and, and then a literary agency that shops it around. I don't think anybody's reading anything. Because go read a review from somebody who actually has read it. The most inspired book they've ever read in their life. I mean, other than the Bible and Pilgrim's Progress. And I, but you know what I'm saying. It's modern day. That's why it's so incredible. Thank you, Lord. So I need I need your prayer warriors over me because I don't want to do this out of a sense of greed asking for you to read my book spread it all over the world shoot this story this passion to m merchandise and spread things out and distribute and market it's been inside me since I was a little kid to tell every single person I knew about Jesus Gotta make money somehow, man. Selling a book sounds pretty sweet. You know, my thoughts are, what if you could get it to 99 cents and put it on an app, you know, as an ebook? I don't know. I need some help with that. If somebody wants to come alongside me, if there's you're a distributor, an editor, a producer of such things, and that is your godly given gift, use it and hit me up. Are these people saved? Yes. Are all these people have a little bit wrong with them? Yes. And some of them are obvious and it's written all over them. But I still pray for them. And we're still in the age of grace until the restrainer is removed and the rapture occurs. So while we're in the age of grace, we're going to operate that way. It's free. In Jesus' name.